Suriname Mezi government troops send tanks and heavy armor to see Chinatown just because these Chinese gangsters have robbed Chris Yuan of the tons of cocaine. Any gangster with a weapon in his hand will be shot until the Chinese gang boss Shen Jin, who is enjoying a massage, surrenders. Upon receiving the news of the invasion, Shen Jin puts on his clothes and hides to watch his henchmen being wiped out one by one. With this onslaught, he'll be captured in less than 10 minutes. What surprised him is a call from Ingu offering to help. When a Chinese mob boss loses all his sanctuary, he has to beg a Korean, who has a vested interest in him to save him. So, he tells Ingu the location of his hideout without hesitation. Ingu then enters through the back door of the grocery store and finds Chin Jin. Chin Jin shows no defense against him and anxiously asks him how to escape. Suddenly Li, the traitor who had betrayed Chin Jin, slides out from behind the door and pulls the trigger, shooting him dead. The gunshot also signals the elimination of the gates that have terrorized Suriname's Chinatown for so many years. Through this action, Ingu not only helped Pastor Yohan to get rid of his enemies, but also to get back the goods that belonged to him. Pastor Yohan also tried to sell the goods through the European market, but those people only do business with the Chinese Mafia. Under pressure from his Colombian business partners, Yohan had no choice but to rejoin Chen Ho. He decided to ship the goods to Puerto Rico immediately, but he had to make sure he got paid for them right away. Chen Ho asked him when immediately, Yu once said it would be easy to get the Surinamese government to fly a plane, so they agreed that the shipment would leave Suriname by airplane in three hours for Puerto Rico. When the deal was agreed upon, Yu Hun had his men begin preparing the shipment for Puerto Rico. At that moment, in a conference room in Florida, that he, in cooperation with the CIA, was preparing to arrest the Surinamese drug lord, Yu Hun. Since the CIA had set the trap in advance, as soon as Yohan's shipment entered Puerto Rico, the D was able to go straight to Yohan's base under a unique pretext. Of course, all of this was contingent on Yohan taking the bait, and Yohan didn't expect the two tens on credit to be such a hard sell. Plus, the Colombian drug lords were putting a lot of pressure on him, so Yohan had to take a chance. When everything was ready, Ingu planned to go to Puerto Rico with the goods, because he confirmed for Chang Ho. That this is the safest option for now. As long as he left Suriname, the CIA and D could at least guarantee Ingu's safety no matter how they attacked Yohan's base. But before he left, Yohan suddenly changed his mind. He sent his men to deliver the goods instead of Ingu and left Ingu with him. Is Yohan getting suspicious again? In order to prevent him from seeing the flaws, Ingu says he is willing to do as he says, but he has to report the situation to his boss. When Chang Ho finds out what's going on, the CIA gets worried. They weren't just worried about Ingu's personal safety, but what if Yu Huang was just pulling a fast one? For example, there was no cargo on the plane or some other items. If this fails, they don't know how else to get Yu Huang into the trap. Even the D may not be involved in the next operation. By now the Suriname AZ government plane had begun a slow flight to Puerto Rico. Back at Yu Huang's mansion, Ingu takes a break from the barbecue to talk to Lee about what to do next. Whether this operation succeeds or fails, both of them are in great danger. Li reassures Ingu and promises to keep him safe. While they are having a secret conversation, Yu Huan suddenly comes over and asks what they are talking about. Ingu scolds him for not being able to barbecue him for his ugly face. Li rushed to scold him. Yu Huan didn't suspect anything when they were fighting with each other because he knew that they were always at odds. On the other hand, the man who replaced Ingu to deliver the goods has arrived in Puerto Rico safely. Chang Ho and the head of the Drug Enforcement Administration D came to meet him. To prevent suspicion, Chang Ho lied that the American was his smuggling partner. Due to time constraints, they had to inspect the goods before paying. But Yu Huan's men insisted on seeing the money first, or else everything was off the table. Chang Ho had no choice but to let them enter the trap early. But this also messed up their plans. If the plane doesn't have the goods they want, not only will the operation fail, but the undercover agents planted under Yu Huan's men will also be in great danger, especially in Gu. When the plane entered the intended location, when Yo Huan's men approached to check on the authenticity of the payment, Chang Ho pulled out a gun and asked him to surrender. He claimed to be an employee of the CIA and told him to surrender with his hands up. At the same time, a large number of D special agents rushed in, quickly surrounded the men, and warned them to drop their weapons and get down on the ground. However, before the mercenaries could react or make a move, they were shot to pieces. Yo Huan's men saw what was happening and turned to run. How could he be so naive as to escape? 
After subduing Yu Huan's men, they rushed to check whether the cocaine had been transported or not. Luckily, Yu Huan's shipment was real cocaine. The head of the D immediately mobilized special agents to go straight to Yu Huan's base in Suriname. Venezuelan mercenaries began moving towards Suriname in helicopters at full speed. On the other side, Yu Huan, who had been waiting for news of the deal, was very anxious. He kept calling his men, but no one answered. Ingu also showed an uneasy look. The two of them were speechless. After much persuasion by the CIA, Yu Huan's men eventually answered the phone. Upon hearing the news, Yu Huan happily told Ingu that he was going to get champagne. But when he walked away, he took all the bodyguards nearby. Sensing something was wrong, Ingu took out his weapon and hit it on his person. At this point, the special forces had 10 minutes to reach Suriname. Yu Huan prepares the champagne and asks Ingu what he wants. It turns out that his man never drinks, so Yu Huan is suspicious. He pulls out a weapon and asks if Ingu's boss is trying to make a doggy dog deal. Yu Huan doesn't realize that the D is arresting him. He just thinks that Ingu's boss is trying to take his shipment. Ingu deliberately puts on a light-hearted tone and says he's thinking too much. It was then that Yu Huan received a phone call from the president of Suriname. He informed that the D was crossing the border into Suriname. He also asked if Yu Huan was selling his products into American territory. Yu Huan realized what was going on. He was furious and pointed his gun at Ingu. He didn't realize that Ingu had prepared such a big trap for him. Yu Huan was about to pull the trigger. Suddenly Lee comes from the side and puts the gun to Yu Huan's head. Yu Huan didn't believe he was a traitor. <laughs> By now, the special forces had already sneaked into his base. With a gunshot, Yu Huan's men were killed one after another. Taking this opportunity, Yu Huan backhanded Lee in the leg to free himself. Ingu took cover as the special forces advance. Yu Huan has no choice but to withdraw. Seeing them fleeing in their car, Ingu took the risk of chasing after them. By the time Chang Ho arrived, only Lee was left sitting on the ground, breathing heavily with bodies lying all around him. Yu Huan, led by his bodyguards, was driving towards the presidential palace with Ingu in hot pursuit. At the same time, the helicopter gunships in the sky pointed their guns at Yu Huan. After a gun battle, only Yu Huan's car escaped the helicopters. Just when Yu Huan thought it was safe to leave, Ingu's car crashed into him. Yu Huan was knocked off his feet. When he reacted, he got out of the car and fled, knowing that there was a speedboat not far away. Ingu was in hot pursuit. As Yu Huan was about to start the speedboat to escape, he swooped down and knocked Yu Huan into the water. Then the two of them started a fight to the death. Yu Huan was living a luxurious life, so his physical strength was obviously not as good as Ingu's. It didn't take long for him to be overpowered by Ingu. At the same time, the D arrived with weapons and ordered them to stay put. When Yu Huan saw them coming, he ran over and surrendered with his hands up. He said he's just a priest and has done nothing wrong. But when Shang Ho came over, Yu Huan realized that this was all a setup. He didn't resist anymore, but looked at Ingu and grinned in a mysterious way. Soon after, Ingu finally returned to his home after a long absence. When he saw his wife and children, his anxiety and fear disappeared. He didn't realize that so much time had passed since he left. Luckily, his wife was very kind and took good care of the children. <laughs> Next, Ingu opened a garage in Korea and life was quiet and cozy. One day, Chang Ho came to see him. He said that he might not be able to fulfill the 300 million won that he had agreed to give him. But he got Ingu the rights to run to hotels under his department. He could earn more than 300 million won by running the hotels for only two years. Ingu didn't say anything as long as he gets paid. Meanwhile, Chang Ho said Yu Huang was sentenced to 10 years in prison. But strangely enough, Yu Huang asked him to give Ingu a message. Yu Huang must find Ingu to get his stuff back when he gets out of jail. It seems to be an autographed baseball. Ingu rushes to take the ball from the kid's hand and asks what's wrong with it. But Chang Ho doesn't understand either. Yu Huang just says it's the only real thing he has in his hand. Who knows the truth? It was then that Ingu probably realized that maybe Yu Huang really valued and trusted him for a while. May excellent movies be watched by more people. Feel free to subscribe to Chili Film and leave comments.